coming down a little bit, and then also on my flow and not dropping the ends of my sentences. So my name is Tanner Swanson. So I want to start off by first telling all of you that unfortunately, no, I'm not going to be funny today. It's my fault, as Obama says. Um, so I just want to have that said at the beginning. Now, let's go to the next part. Someday, all of you are going to die. It is a fact, it is inevitable, and it will happen. Everything that you've ever done, you won't be able to change, and everything that you haven't done, you won't be able to do. And I think that that is a very terrifying prospect for most people. And because of that, over 95% of us, 95%, that's almost all of us, never think about it at all. Because we have such a terrible negative concept of it. And today I do want to talk about it. Because someday I will die, and I don't want to look back on my life and have regrets. I don't want to be afraid of passing on. And to give you an insight into how I came to this conclusion, I want to tell you the life of my great-grandmother. I want to tell you about how she was able to transform her death into something more simply because she wasn't afraid. And I'm going to tell you that by going through her life, her death, and her legacy and its impact on my life. So why don't we all start where we're most comfortable already with her life. So my great-grandmother grew up in 1917. She was born before women had rights <laughs> to vote, to do almost anything, and she went to college during the Great Depression and the Dust Bowl while working on a farm. So she had a very difficult life, but despite that, she went on to become one of the most revered nurses in the largest hospital in Chicago. She got a college education, and she did it all by herself. And that's something that she always <coughs> was really hell-bent on making an impression on us whenever we came to her with her problems. <laughs> but that was something that was really important to her. And she also married one of the most incredible people that I've ever known. He, his entire philosophy of love was respect and reciprocity, something that she always spent long nights telling us about in the hopes that it would rub off on us. But as life marched on, her career came to a close and her husband passed on and her children moved away. But rather than stay where she was, she uprooted her entire life in Chicago, a lifetime, donated her home to charity, and came to move, and came to Phoenix to live with her family. And all of these things were stories that my great-grandmother had told me when I was young, but I, I never understood their significance. I never saw why they truly mattered and related to me until her health started deteriorating. Now, my great-grandmother was very aware of her mortality. She was a nurse, she had been around people her entire life who were dying, and she knew when her time was coming. And as that time approached, I noticed that she never expressed any fear, any regret, or anything. She, she only wanted to spend more time with us. And and so I had to ask her, why? Why are you so happy? Why are you so content with this? Like, I'm, I'm so sad just watching this, and, and yet you seem so fine with it. And, and I remember she looked, me, she, she looked at me, and, and she told me that she had always lived her life as if every action she took would be her last, as if she could die at any moment. And she told me, I have never faltered in my life to make a decision that would make me or those around me happy because I know that I wanted to say when I died that I did it. That I had taken control of my life, I had made the best of it, that I have lived, laughed, and loved, and that I had no regrets. And she didn't. She passed on peacefully, in a warm home with her family, but on December 12, 2015. And this, this was possible because she never took any action for granted. She always acted as if everything she did would be the last thing that she did. She cared <coughs> with the same compassion as she would in retrospect when she was young. Her compassion of consistency, of love, intentional caring, making sure that she was doing this on purpose, 
was her legacy, her compassion that comes with death. And, and she was able to, with that, transform her moment of death into like one of the most triumphant moments of her life. And that's, that's something that I've never seen again in anyone else. And, and so with that said, I ask you to remember, she was willing to look death in the face for a lifetime in her profession and her personal life and tell her that kindness bears no regrets. It doesn't. And you can only be aware of that when you're honest with yourself about your mortality. And ultimately, my goal for you to understand after going through her life and her death and her legacy with me, I want you to understand that every one of us has a limited time here. Not just you, all of us. And we have to celebrate that fact and make the most of it until that time is over.